So you're at risk of just getting clocked in the face. Like well, he's surrounded oh, by yeah, a drunk you're a bartender, <laughs> man. You, yeah. you delegate the night for a lot of people, right? Like, I don't like cutting anybody off, but if I have to, I will, I'll gladly. But you also got to understand that now you've cut somebody off. Their, their anger is going to go through the roof. Yeah. yeah. Especially when alcohol is involved. All, yeah, yeah, we've all been down that road, right? Yeah. yeah. So... Really with the talking Drink smoke, pop pills Is the only way you solving all the problem Oh well, okay Guess you ain't got a lot of options How can I comment on something I don't understand Changing the plans And you be changing the whip Just as quick as you changing your hair That's good, don't fuck with you But I still fuck with you I heard the stories, I really don't care Hopping on board of flights Out of the city, you with me My homie will send you the ticket You with it, really ain't kidding I really don't care Wait off the shoulders and my uh, we got Brand Tender over here. Thanks for coming here today, Mark. Uh, thanks for Woo! having me. Appreciate it. And uh, we're also, yeah, we're at, a, we're at a new location. We're not at our usual spot. We're at Ergie's Coffee Till Cocktail Bar over here on uh, Bathurst and Edmonton area. Yep. Uh, beautiful place. Nice establishment. Beautiful nice little spot. vibe. Yeah. This is where uh, this is where Marky likes to come and hang out. What is this? Your chill spot, Mark? Yeah, uh, it is now. Yeah. You know, yeah. Drinks are free, so why not? <laughs> nice, right? nice. What's your friend? This Ergie's your friend. I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah. So Ergie's has been cutting my hair for uh, probably about close to 20 years now, and okay. he decided to open this up, and he called me to come and take care of it. So I would, I would do the same am, thing, right? <laughs> so okay, yo, let's uh, let's just kind of. Like figure out what you do. So, what exactly is a is a mixologist? You want to just give that a little brief explanation? Uh, mixologist. Uh, that's a mouthful. We could be here for hours. No. So, a mixologist <laughs> is just like a, a high end bartender, basically. A uh, bartender is basically your your typical club bartender, as yeah. we like to call them. Your basic drinks: vodka soda, rum, and coke. Uh, mixologist. He can play around with ingredients. Uh, create a cocktail for you. He just knows a shitload of drinks. Mm-hmm. Um, and when there's certain ingredients that are missing, he can replace them with other li- liquors or, or juices or whatnot to replicate or create another fantastic drink. Did so, you have to? Sorry, did you have to take oh, like yeah. lessons or like a course or something? I took a couple courses. Honestly, my the I found my best way of learning was to go to bars and start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly what I was going to ask you. I was going to say, like, are you like? I'm, I'm assuming you have to be familiar with almost every taste of each. Uh, yeah, you've got to. You got to really. You want to try every single liquor possible, so you right. can actually have an understanding of what it tastes like, what it uh, what it, it might pair well with. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was mostly going to bars and just watching other bartenders. And then if there's something in particular that I really wanted to learn, I'd Google it. Nice. Yeah. How how long ago did you start? I started uh, 15 years ago. Um, I was yeah, about 21. Um, just regular bartending, or were you doing this? Ju- I actually started as a bar back. Uh, the words is bar bitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nick. No, no. Look, I was I was that for a, for a little bit, but I was never your bitch, bro. No, you, you no, had respect. You, we- you were my bitch. No, no, no. No, you're great. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had some fun. No, absolutely. So I started at the bottom of the pole too. You know, I was running bottles and and being somebody else's assistant, mm-hmm. but that's where you learn a yeah. lot too, is watching them and and watching the environment and the crowd and you actually get familiar with a lot of liquors, boozes, and even the bar setup. Uh every bar is always going to be different. Yeah. But yeah. You get familiar with that bar setting, which is I'm assuming where you're going to be working at for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Um but that's where I started, and then I said, "Screw this!" And I want to bartend. I want to be center the of main, attention. You want to be the main man. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's so, what I remember, uh, bro. You, like whenever, uh, like back when we were, uh, you were bartending. I was bar backing for you. You were. Everybody wanted you to make their drinks. Like you were the center of attention, even though there was other available bartenders. The chicks were waiting. The guys were waiting. Everyone just wanted to see you do some crazy stuff. Cause you, you flare too, right? Yeah, I do. Uh, I don't. I can't put on a full show for you, but what we uh, it's what we call uh, working flare. So you okay. kind of flip things as you're creating a cocktail. So I won't full out put on a show for you, like mm-hmm. two minutes. But we're getting there. Bartenders yeah. working on it. Nice. 
Nice. Yo, you could set the bar on fire and everything. Yeah, I definitely I love setting the bar on fire. <laughs> do you know how to cool. do that fire stuff? Like where, where it's like... Yeah, I love setting bars on fire. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do. Yeah, literally. literally, bro. Controlled, literally. guys. Controlled yeah. fires. Like, as long as there's an extinguisher close no, by. No, no, no. Bucket That's of water is good. No, do, you yeah. get, do you get nervous when you pull up to new bars that you haven't performed at yet? Always. Yeah. So uh, that's actually funny because last 15 years, no matter what event I go and work at or where I'm at, the, the nerves just like the first half an hour, mm-hmm. 45 minutes yeah. are kicking in. Yeah. Then two, three tequila shots in. You're good. Good. We're good to go. Yeah. You know? uh, How's work been? Work's been great. Uh, super crazy. My summer is super packed already. Uh, Friday, Saturdays, June, July, and August are fully booked already. Um, not, not even nice. exaggerating. Um, but I'm just trying to trying to see how I can make brand tender grow. Uh, yeah. Whether it's more bartenders working underneath me, nice. or how I can create bigger parties or work at bigger events. Is this right now just solely by yourself? Uh, I'm the main person. I have a couple other bartenders, depending on the size of the event. Okay. But um, but yeah, no, brand tender's got a team. Nice, nice. Yeah. So I, from what I remember before, I think it was just you. It was yourself. just me for a while, and uh, things and get busy. You got things you gotta get grow, busy. Of course. People like what you do and want to do what you do. So if they're willing to learn and they're motivated, I will be more than glad to teach anybody. Nice, nice. To win for both of us. Um, what's it called? So, like, especially during COVID, how has that been? Because, like, th- like, obviously, we know everything's been closed. I know, <laughs> obviously, there's some, some, like, some private events, things like that. So, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure there's things that are keeping you afloat. But, like, I'm sure you got hit pretty tough at the beginning of it, at least, no? Uh, there's probably a good, solid month. Really? That was it? <laughs> oh, really? A good, you solid know month. I, I, I and that was the month of March of 2020. Oh, right when it started, basically. When it yeah. started, people were kind of scared. Uh, a lot of people were getting COVID, so they had to cancel. Or, you know, elder people were there. Everybody didn't know what was actually going on. So um, after a couple of months into it, nobody gave a shit. What about yeah. when the lockdown But hold on. You know, that's, that's the kind of crowd that you're around because the crowd that I've been around, even a couple of years in, people are still like iffy about going out doing things like like yo who who's throwing these parties like what? let me go where's my invite yeah right, <laughs> like, right. i needed a bar back too i knew i should have yeah, called yo, you my Fuck. Fuck. sorry man <laughs> <laughs> next time next time Damn. <laughs> Maybe it was because I knew how you worked. Yeah, nah, yo, I'm but I hustle, them, bro. I'm, you I'm know that. Them. I actually heard about you the most during COVID. Like, I saw you the most on people's stories. Like, um, like COVID, I so. said, I, I had one slow month, and that was March. Yeah. Um, I literally haven't stopped. So um, were you shut down? Like, they didn't shut you guys down? How do you shut somebody that you don't know what's happening? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what? That's, yeah. that's facts. Nobody needs to know. Yeah. I have a very good clientele, and they've got really, really big houses. Okay. Um, and a lot of times gated houses. So you come knocking, nobody's going to answer the door. Are these reoccurring clients? Like they, uh, they, yeah. 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 A lot of reoccurring and then word of mouth. So I do absolutely no marketing or advertising for myself. Uh, wow. all my okay. events are strictly word of mouth, um, or my Instagram page. You can go check it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you details on that after. Yeah. Yeah. yeah really um, yeah. but yeah, it's literally word of mouth and just exposure on my Instagram. Like, that's pretty much it. So people kind of just advocating for your brand at that, at that point. Yeah, I, I'm a strong believer of when you really love doing something, it's going to show and people are going to see it and they're going to talk about it. Oh, yeah, it's that, that's definitely taking place right now because uh, you're somewhat of a celebrity. Oh, in, uh, shit. The GTA, you're going to make me blush, man. No, seriously, though, really. Like, I, I was actually <laughs> really excited to do this uh, episode because uh, I, I wanted to see this firsthand. Cause I appreciate you haven't met him yet? Yeah, just a lot of broads posting on their Instagram and... And I do a lot you, of female man. parties. Yeah. I say it was always you, man. Yeah, yeah I need I need the invitation to that one. Yeah. Those ones specifically. <laughs> I gotta become you a gotta work, Nick. I'll work. I don't care I'm, if I'm working beside you. Not taking numbers. Or no, no, I'll work on, beside on you. My... I'll get the bottles you need. But if you don't need anything, I'm there taking shots with the chicks. You know? Perfect. <laughs> I was gonna say we all know why you're there, Nick. Yeah, we all yeah know. for one reason, obviously. <laughs> right. The money. No, the just, money. Yeah. I was gonna say <laughs> the money. The mo- Come on. on. Tell them money's good when you bartend. No, money's great. You know, if you work hard, uh, you can always play harder. Yeah. But but you, you get paid for what the, you. The do, harder right? you work, the, the more recognition you get, and then obviously like a, a big chunk of like your income is, is tips, right? Like yeah, especially in the bar industry. Yeah, like it, majority it, of all it kind is, of serving uh, is yeah, exactly. I was um, gonna say it's majority is would majority of your income from bartending would it be from tips? Um, would you say my line of bartending is a little different? So I'm a freelance bartender, so 
I don't work at a venue on a regular basis where you're getting paid less than minimum wage because you're dependent on your tips. Um, somebody working behind a bar can make a lot more tips than I would at a private function. Um, but I'm also charging a premium price for my my you, skill yeah. and, and my knowledge. You of, come with everything. like Yeah, I bring bar tools, everything. The only thing I don't bring are glasses and tables, yeah. um, but pretty much everything. Anything well, that bottles. I need for, I can provide that service, okay. uh, pick up the liquor, depends the size of the event, mm-hmm. um, and it uh, depends how lazy the client is. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I enough. guess so, yeah. So yeah, for a house party, if they wanted to, if they wanted for like you to pick up the alcohol, right? Yeah, I'd be more than glad to go. Okay. Then uh, brand tender is going to charge them a service fee. Mm-hmm. Time is money. And a gas yeah, and a gas course. surcharge at this. Yeah, point especially nowadays, right now, like two dollars yeah. a liter. Of yeah. That, man. No, I know that's it's that's crazy. Crazy. no, it's insane. Uh, we won't go there. It, that's another day. Is it is it private events or banquet events that you do mostly? I do everything. Everything. So until you say it's like an even balance. Uh, this year has become. I'll probably be at more venues than probably people's houses. Um, I do have a lot of um, event planners that have reached out to me now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this year I got featured in Wedding Lux, which is the biggest wedding magazine in Ontario. Oh, nice. Um, nice. So that was pretty dope. I've got a lot of event planners reaching out. Uh, luxury event planners. Um, nice. Things that we would see at Universal, those those yeah. million dollar weddings, yeah. you know, it's it's just million insane. dollar weddings, yeah, man. bro, like people hanging off the ceiling doing flips, like like oh, I've like seen Cirque a, du bro, I've seen a girl sitting on a hoop, like a like a hula hoop, oh yeah, 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 serving champagne with with cherries and and blueberry, bro, that's the craziest no thing ever. Like, yeah, yeah, there's some crazy stuff we seen there. Yeah, you know, Universal, bro, obviously yeah. top of the line, like hundred percent new, you know, like they, bro, they went full out. Shout and they out know to Peter weekend. and Paul. Peter <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I'm pretty sure they're in Greece or somewhere, like living lavish. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Shout out to them. No, that's for you. <laughs> that's for you. Um, before we get ahead, I wanted to ask. So, how did this come apart? This place. Uh, Ergus, uh, Ergus Coffee Till uh, Cocktail. So, like I said, um, Ergus has been cutting my hair for almost 20 years, and Ergus is a really good friend of mine. And he had an idea. We we're hanging out and you know throwing ideas out. And he's like, "What if I turned this into a speakeasy place?" I'm like, nice. that'd be a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know the perfect bartender, too. Yeah, yeah. Get yourself in there. So I called this girl, and she bartends. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, so uh, so from one day to another, actually, it was probably about a week, he had uh, this bar set up, and uh, he's like, I need a cocktail list. And I was like, done. And uh, here we are now. He's expecting a super crazy, busy summer. Um, you know, it's very, not select, who comes here, but not a lot of people know of this place. Um, but who does, they do tend to come back with more friends. So it's a little low key vibe, but like, yeah, it's a nice little area. It's a nice little spot for the area. If you want to even Monday, like Monday through Sunday, like come by for a drink and just chill out. Mm -hmm. Good beats, uh, Friday, Saturday, there's a DJ here. Uh, during the week, there's usually a little mariachi guy playing some tunes. Um, (laughs) once the weather's nice, they have the little patio out there. Uh, really nice spot, like good energy. And like I said, he's a good friend of mine. I love helping friends, so yeah. cool. especially I, if I love this spot. By the yeah. way, it's really uh, it looks it's very cozy. It's cozy, it's nice. exactly. Yeah, He's got nice. the uh, the VIP section opening up soon downstairs. So yeah, I actually pretty, took a look at that. Pretty one nice to too. Laughing. If you want to come here and just like you know have a small gathering birthday, um, I always say it's not where you are; it's who you're with. Hundred percent. But if you add a sweet ass spot to it, it just makes, it makes that it better, better of a night. And, sure. and an even better bartender. That obviously 100%, makes exactly. yeah, that obviously makes a that difference. That goes without there. a doubt. Yeah. Yo, if you're a really good bartender, I have a, I have like, I was already quizzing you earlier. I have, oh, another, yeah. I have another quiz. Yes. I have another quiz. Do you know what the angel shot is? No, I do not. Oh, what the angel Mr. Bartender. Shot is. Well, damn. Do you know how many drinks there are in the world? Okay, okay, okay. The angel shot. So, so I, Tell I read me about, about this. It. I read Teach about me. this and I was like, okay, I was going to ask you if you've ever been in this situation. Uh oh. It's, it's not the greatest thing, right? It's like, I, I read about it. It's like if a girl felt like she's in danger, she goes to the bartender, asks for an angel, angel shot, and basically means like, like help save her? Me, help me, save ah. me, like something, right? Like, I don't want to be with this dude or something. So I was going to ask you if I've ever been in a situation like that. Uh, maybe, I, I want to say once. I think it, the situation was pretty uh, under control. I think she was just dealing with some drunk that was kind of flirting with her. Okay. Uh, it wasn't anything like, Escalated where she actually needs somebody's help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was just kind of giving me a sign like, "Help me." Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Just you like, know. 
But uh, but I am going to keep that in mind, though. Angel, yeah, remember yeah. Angel shot. That's something that apparently girls they know They usually about. just come up to the bar and they're like, hey, Angel, can you get me a shot? Okay, like, not like that. Oh, not really oh, how many times shot. does that happen to you? Like, rarely. Not joking. <laughs> no, so it doesn't like actually a, happen that That's often. like a safe that's an actual, code? That's a safe code. It's, it's safe so word. Girls, if you're ever at the nice. bar, you guys need to, yeah, it's Angel shot. Uh, I learned about it recently, and that's why I wanted you to. You taught me too. something new. Nice. Hey, Cheers yeah. to that, man. On top of the other things I've taught you. I know. Many, um, many things. Like, so the list just goes on. Yeah. <laughs> What's like one of the, like, tell some crazy bar stories? Oh, I don't have any crazy bar stories. I'm sure what you do. What do you mean after 20 lie. years of bar things? Well, I, not crazy were bar you story. there when I punched out at Universal because yeah. he tried stealing the tips? Yeah, yeah. How was yeah, that not a crazy story? You're well, like, okay, tell them about that. You just punched the guy Okay, so I'll sum it up in a nutshell. You don't even need to say, just say X. Yeah, we'll bleep out the name. Don't yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Um, <laughs> but no, so some guy was working at a bar. Another bar canceled out. The bartender didn't show up. Our manager sent somebody else up there. So we were working. We had a great night. Uh, once his event ended, he came back down. So typically, you're gonna grab your tips because he wasn't part of them. Put him off to the side, and you start a new tip cup. So at the end of the night, he wanted full dibs on all the tips, and it's like not happening. You weren't like, there for the you first. weren't here. You made your tips from your event. So what are you doing here, right? So doesn't the guy try to steal money right off the counter? And security was right there. I already had called security over. Uh, they didn't do much. They didn't really care because they didn't yeah. want to put up a fight or anything. So we ended up getting the money back. And he was just annoying me because he was just like breathing over my shoulder talking shit. And so I just got to the point where I was like, security's not kicking him out. So I'm just going to throw him out. So I just job. like pushing him out, pushing him out, pushing him out. And the so guy tried. matters in your own hands. Yeah, absolutely. You have to sometimes. Like you're fucking with my pay. Like, sorry, you don't do that. No, yeah. yeah. um, I yeah. I worked very hard for that money that night. Absolutely. It, was, it was a busy event. So uh, so whatever, I'm pushing him out. I was being a little rude, but at this point, it's like you're already trying to steal. Like you're lucky I didn't hit you right at the get-go. So uh, so he tried swinging at me, and I just hit him. Nice. <laughs> he swung at you first. Yeah, he tried to give me an elbow as I'm pushing him yeah. out, and that's why I hit him. I would never hit him first. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he, he swung at me, he missed, and he turned right around, and I just clocked him on. Like, oh, perfect. So sorry. nothing illegal went down. Perfect. No, no, I just <laughs> no, 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 nothing no. illegal went down. No, no, absolutely not. It's self-defense. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, he tried hitting me, and, um, and yeah, that was, uh, that was that night. You ever deal with like aggressive clients? Yeah, I almost speaking of the same person. Actually, I almost got punched out once. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, because of him at Universal. What yeah, yeah. Um, so he was talking some shit to some other guy, some guests, and uh, he didn't know that these guests were like VIP. Um, so I'm trying to tell him, I'm like, dude, shut your mouth. You don't know who these guys are. And out of nowhere, that guy seen him through the, those black blinds that we had there. And I almost got sucker punched. Like, literally, the like, guy tried punching him, except he almost hit me instead. Oh, shit. Uh, and then I kicked him out again. I was just like, you got to leave before somebody else gets hit. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Universal was an interesting place. <laughs> no, 100%. A lot of stories from So that you're time. at risk of just getting clocked in the face like 24 Well, he's surrounded oh, by yeah, a you're a bartender, <laughs> man. You, yeah. you delegate the night for a lot of people, right? Like... I don't like cutting anybody off, but if I have to, I will uh, gladly. But you also got to understand that now you've cut somebody off, their their anger is going to go through the roof. Yeah, yeah. especially when alcohol. We've involved, all yeah, yeah, we've all been down that road, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so things can get a little ugly. You're always worried about people robbing you at the end of the night, especially mm. if they can see your tip cup. Um, yeah, I never even took that to consideration. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Some people are the just drunk, uh, lingering idiots. Yeah, and some people will just do anything for a buck, right? Like, yeah. um, there's a lot of desperate people out there. It's unfortunate, especially but, under the influence. If you're drunk, yeah, that's all it takes, you know. And last thing you know, you're just two steps walk into your car, you can get jumped or anything like that. Yeah. Luckily, yeah, I never have those issues or anything. I like to think that everybody leaves loving me, not to toot my own horn or anything, but no, you, you want to make, you everybody, happy. make everybody happy. Yeah. You want everybody, everybody's there for a special, special <clears> night, <throat> special occasion, whether it be a birthday, a wedding, bar mitzvah, whatever it is, even just a pool party. Mm -hmm. Like you want your guests to, to feel good because if they feel good, I feel good. If I feel good, they feel even better. Right. It's a vicious circle. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I win, you win. We all win. Yeah. But so, do, do you leave when, when everyone leaves or do like, wouldn't you stay a little uh, bit It later? all depends. Mm -hmm. uh, it yeah. depends time of service. Like, you know, sometimes the parties continue going on a little longer than they want to be paying me for. Oh, right. uh, sometimes I'll stick around and join them for a drink. Depends yeah. who it is. Um, and then sometimes I'll just pack up and leave. Right. Um, okay. I'll, I'll make sure I try to leave the bar set up so that they can kind of help themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, it, it all depends. Right. Okay. That's the good thing about 
doing private events is like you're kind of you know when you're in and you're out yeah uh there's always those times where it's like no we'll pay you for another hour oh we'll pay you for another hour yeah. so you know seven hours later it's like i just want to go home yeah. but are you okay with like are you yeah, okay of with course. that Obviously, yeah, yeah, i'm making yeah, money yeah so yeah As it's it, not like a typical job where you're having fun like you're, you're, just you're at the party and, you're part of the party yeah. you're drinking you know, at the party <laughs> yeah i always drink responsibly yeah obviously um, yeah and and you're getting paid for it, right? Like, mm-hmm. And and when you like what you do, and I love what I do, it's that much easier it's to stick work. around for an extra hour yeah. Yeah. or two. You know, there have been times where I've I've been busy and just having a great time, and I look down, and it's like, oh shit, I finished half an hour ago. That's nice. Nice. It's just like, all right, cool guys, mind. I'm out of here, yeah. and they're like, no, I'll stick around, have a drink. Okay, cool. Yeah. Why not? Some nice people, but there's always yeah, nice people yeah. But but that's <clears> where <throat> it starts. You know, they're nice to me, I'm nice to them, and they're. It's like I said, it's a vicious circle, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, the there's no other reason life. not to be nice to somebody. Yeah, absolutely. And, unless there's a reason to. And even then, you even know, then, you're right. Even you're right. then, kill, but kill sometimes we kindness. are human, and uh, and we let the emotions or the situation get the best of us. Or yeah, I was gonna say, I had a question. So, like, I have an answer. Do do <laughs> <laughs> you should? We're on the, we're on the, we're on the podcast. Yeah, also, yeah. Um, like I'm sure you probably get those annoying clients. Like, cause even me when I'm at the bar, like I feel I feel bad when I'm like I don't want to rush them because I see that they're busy. But like, does it ever get to the point where you're like, "Hey, buddy, like I'm I'm trying to do something. I'll get to you in a second. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. And uh, like it it just sucks because sometimes they'll tip you well so that you don't forget them. But it's not that you are forgetting them. But when you're yeah. making a drink and you're midway through a drink, you're not going to just stop and, yeah. and go. You're focused, like, man. That's, yeah, it's you're, about the you focus. Know, and yeah. a lot of my drinks that I'm making, it's not a vodka soda, rum, and coke. Exactly. Where it's like, okay, cool, I can put that down, or I'll be done in three seconds. And a shitty one at that, because a lot of the time it's like three quarters coke and like a quarter. Yeah, exactly. Of so, um, but I always like, you know, if it's just a beer or something that I know that they're drinking, I try to memorize everybody's drink. I'm only human again. It's a good so bartender. So yeah. many it's a good drinks. Good bartender. Hey, side note: that's how I became good friends with the uh, the hammer from Z103 and and all the guys that that work at Z103 is because they did their Christmas party at Universal, and oh, I, I, I I simply remembered uh, Hammer's drink. He wanted a vodka sprite and a lime. So by the time he was walking for a second drink, I remembered, and it was like love at first sight. Man. That's amazing. Well, what was it again? Uh, it was a drink? vodka sprite. Okay, if I ever see him, I'm going to make sure I send him. Shout out Hammer. Shout out Z103. Right? Yeah. Exactly. No, yeah. Uh, you know what? Yeah, actually, speaking about that, um, have you ever done anything for a celebrity? Uh, I've done a couple. Uh, I've done an NBA player's uh, birthday for the Toronto Raptors. And then yes. we did that other NHL player at Universal. Um, I don't remember that. I've done a couple other big names. Uh, owners of Green Park. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, Muto family. Yeah. Uh, a <laughs> bunch of other. The Gaspris, Cordellucci. Yeah, a couple just of Just all the, yeah, all the yeah, big yeah. ballers. So in, in if they're Vaughn, located in Vaughn, yeah. Woodbridge, and Kleinberg, yeah. I've pretty much done their and events. over like million dollar like <laughs> net worth. Over here, would you say it's more Vaughn, Woodbridge, or is it more Toronto located? Like, like lo- we're here locals? at this place? Yeah, like yeah what, this what place locals? is more local. Yeah, okay. Um, it's more local just because a lot of people don't know of it. It's not that big of a place. They don't promote it. Um, it's not like downtown, right? Downtown, you're going to go, hey, we're going to go to... Just walk into it. Yeah, or you know like the big popping places because they're being advertised on the radio. Mm-hmm. Or your buddy was there last week and he got fucked up. Or he met a cute girl and he's like, guys, let's go back this weekend again. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is more of your local place where you're going to... You know, if you're from the area and you just want to come by for... A quick cocktail a drink or anything it's like you're gonna come by but you're also gonna tell some people um word of mouth travels l- distance so oh, yeah. you might have some people that are coming from downtown you might have some i come from vaughn woodbridge so i'm one yeah i feel like word of mouth is better at this point because instagram and everywhere else basically online it's just flooded with robots now like it yeah, obviously. you can't even. Yeah, and it's not, and, it's not genuine anymore. It's yeah, like too much, too much. And so. people's attention span is so quick that even if you did run advertisement for your page, it like, wouldn't. A lot of the times, they're just gonna kind of like fly through it. Yeah, you yeah, know what no, I mean? hundred percent. And tough. at the end of the day, would you want to go hire somebody for your event that referred you, or are you gonna go just find somebody? Definitely referral, and, right? You're gonna kind of be a little more open to hiring somebody you don't know. 
just because you got referred to them yeah. by somebody as opposed to just finding them on the internet, right? right? Yeah. It also depends how desperate you are, right? Yeah. Um, what's it called? So I don't know if you guys know. I did a little bit of uh, my, my background research on Marky. <laughs> see, that, see that you had a, a piece done on you by City Life, yo. That looks, I was actually I, really, really nice. I, I read it. I watched the video. Very well put together. How did that, how did that uh, take uh, off? What happened? That honestly was probably actually one of my most proudest uh, I'm, pr- I'm proud of you with that, brother. Thanks, I'm proud of you. I saw that. I was like, damn, that's, that's my boy. Um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. They reached out to me. Um, they had a meeting, apparently, and they were looking for somebody different, somebody new for their uh, November edition, and we're going back to... 2020. 2020. Yeah, it was for their last edition of the year, December edition, and they reached out to me, and they had told me they're, they're having a group meeting, and somebody had said, hey, why don't... I guess they follow me, mm-hmm. and... Um, and they're like, hey, how about we do it on Brand Tender? So they reached out to me, and I, I felt honored, honestly. Like, I was speechless nice. when they asked me. And I was like, this is great, because I get it in the mail, so I see their stuff. And yeah. uh, it was really, it was really, really nice uh, being recognized for something. Again, word of mouth. Like, you know, they heard about me from somebody else because they either attended my event or, or they've hired me. Um, so it, it makes me feel good and it makes me just want to push myself to do better. Yeah. Work harder. Uh, absolutely. Learn more. That's the great thing about being a bartender too, is that there's so many different avenues of, of what you can do and, and what you can't do. Mm-hmm. Like there's just endless amount of knowledge that you can learn yeah. about being behind a bar. You, you never know who you're going to meet. You never know whose drink you're making. Yeah, I was just going to say never. that. It's like you, you meet so many new people and new characters like within your, uh, within the time of your career, right? Yeah, and and, and that, like Nick just said, like, you know, you, you might be serving somebody a drink like, and you might not even know who they are. Yeah, but yeah. Like, if, like Hammer, for example, you probably didn't, like, did you know, did you recognize him? No. Did he introduce himself to you? Well, no. I Someone? Yeah, yeah. Somebody had told me, right? Okay. Uh, I've done a couple of events where some people look, you know, like they're important. Yeah. And I'll ask around and it's like, yeah, yeah. Do you know who that is? And it's like, okay. Cool. Yeah, but I feel like everyone in Vaughn looks important, but they're not actually <laughs> Yeah, <important>. you're, you're, <laughs> you're, not, you're not fully wrong. <laughs> yeah. Not fully wrong. Um, back to also celebrities. I just did uh, Thomas Caberlet's wife's birthday. Oh, nice. Uh, awesome. That's an OG right ago. there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of my favorite defensemen for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Him, him, and, him and McCabe on the blue line was Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. So I, yeah. one of my, my first Maple Leafs jersey was actually Brian McCabe. Nice. Uh, still have it. Nice. And... Uh, Honestly, one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life, him and his wife. Uh, they own Quanto Basto on Avenue Road, actually. That's oh, so they still, they're still yeah, like yeah, in they're Toronto. Still, right? Yeah, they're still in Toronto. Oh, uh, wow. Great people. Um, and like I said, he was just awesome. Like, he was in awe every time he'd walk by the bar. Not that I'm tuning my own horn, but <laughs> like, I made a purpose of doing something cool whenever yeah, I seen him walking yeah. by the bar, right? Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah. So he'd like stop his buddies and he'd be like, hey, see that and, it's just like, and like i see everything and hear everything so it's like it's like yes nice. no because that's pretty luxury for them i mean all the, all the hockey guys just like this smash back ruse and, yeah you know, you know like, shots like i yeah. I've, like when i uh, originally started um and you had asked me that and i'll get to that in a second uh where brand yeah, like tender and started. bartending yeah. actually started yeah. for me but man i've carried out some uh, some of uh the leafs players out Hammered, oh, and no all they way. were smashing were beers and uh, and shots. You God know, it's just like average stereotypical hockey player. No? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it was great. Like I got my skate signed, my no jersey way. signed. Oh, yeah, that's they, solid. Sick. Yeah, yeah. That's no, sick. great people. Like you know, people have this judge of character and like these a celebrities or these athletes, and, and that like all you have to do is look at them like any other human, and and they're gonna treat you just as well as anybody else would. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah. They actually hate the fact that, like, you, you know, treat you, them like you, yeah, you try to see, like, you know, oh no, like, just be yourself. Be normal. They're just people. Yeah, yeah. And that's like, all I did. Yeah. I was normal. And it was great because every time you'd order a round of shots, uh, I'll never forget. He's like, hey, it was actually Shane Corson uh, from the Maple Leafs. And he's like, every time we order a shot, you better bring one for yourself. So I was pretty just fucked up as <laughs> he was by the end of the night. <laughs> I was drinking a lot of iced tea shots in between oh, <laughs> because I just couldn't keep up. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did he know or you were, you were just... No, no, no. He didn't care. He wasn't checking that was shots. That was smart. He definitely, yeah. Yeah, he definitely you know, had but, no idea. Uh, but it was great. Like, you know what I mean? And you, if you're just yourself, like, people are going to appreciate that and, uh, and, and notice it. And, and, you know, you 
make friendship that way. Yeah. No, hundred percent. I, I did like, we talk about this all the time. Like if, if we, if we met Drake, because we do like the, obviously we're on the music side and the engineering side and For all sure. that stuff. Like if we met Drake, I wouldn't want to fangirl to his face. Like that yeah. wouldn't make any sense. I feel like in the beginning of, um, of their career, it's obviously nice to see all the glamour and glitz and maybe you feel special at one point. But then after that, you, you kind of question yourself all the time. It's like, who's actually here for me or yeah. who's here, you know what I mean? Who's here just to take a picture of me? Like who actually cares about me? So on and so forth. So like, I understand what you're saying about the whole thing. Like just looking at them as a human and stuff. It kinda yeah. Like, and there's always a time and a place for like, you know, like they love it too. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, okay, occasionally for, for sure. But there's yeah. a time and place. Like you don't want to go and flutter them while they're having a conversation. So, you know, yeah. like I simply ask them, Hey, look, listen, if I grab my skates in my car, would you mind signing them? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, absolutely. Like You had them in your car, yeah? Well, it was midwinter too, so yeah. I always oh, carry my stick, skates, and glove in the car. You never know when you're going to yeah, play some that's, fun yeah. <laughs> that's solid. Uh, that's I do have a life, you know? <laughs> there are some <laughs> things that I love to do. And, you know, playing hockey, some pond hockey is always great. So yeah. it was great. I, I actually ended up getting a bunch more autographs uh, on them, so now I have them that at home. Uh, just throughout the... Uh, okay course of bartending you come across these hockey players right? so when you got them signed did you i guess you never wore them again oh no i still wore them oh you still, yeah, i was yeah. gonna say shit you have to go buy another no, 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 no. I, still, I still wore them though yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay that's good that's good let's uh let's actually dive in because we haven't done that yet let's dive into the actual <laughs> beginnings of you oh, being a bartender you yeah that, that's that, yeah that's what i asked yeah. you earlier i wanted to dive into that all right so Started about 15 years ago, uh, young in Eglinton, not too far from here. Uh, there's a small little place called Grazzi, uh, Italian restaurant. Oh, okay, I know that Very, place, very yeah. famous um, place. Myself and my sister used to own a print shop across the street, so Thursday nights were the night to be there, uh, just alongside any other night when there was one particular bartender working there, uh, Rob. Rob was one of the owners as well. This place, whenever he was working, like there was lineups out the door. Um, it was always a party. Like the energy was unbelievable. Like mm -hmm. I can literally feel it across the street. Nice. And uh, so I'd pop in a couple times and go have a drink. We knew each other. We did some business for them. So I don't know, maybe he looked at me as that, like, you know, that young little kid that's just starting to drink and whatnot. So he'd always make a point to take care of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I always noticed that. And it was just watching, like, his energy, the way he treated people, the, the way people would come just to see him, yeah. uh, just to get served by him. Like, that really grew my interest mm -hmm. in drinking. <laughs> and drinking okay and then the bartender came along uh no honestly like i i was just like i'd look at him and i'd be in awe like i'd be like i want to do what he's doing yeah. like this guy's at the party he's got nothing but beautiful women around his bar um guys are throwing money at him and he's a guy bartender mm -hmm. and he's making money like it, it was just like i never in a million years thought i'd ever get to where i am or be in the position that i am and and i'm actually very grateful that you know, I met him. So he's to blame, basically. So he's to blame, yeah. yes, okay. for all this madness. He, he, right. through his, he, he hooked you in. Yeah, he hooked me in. So I actually went to go apply uh, for a job there, and he said no. At his bar? At, at Grazi. Okay. And he said no. And I was kind of just like... Heartbroken. Yeah, I was just kind of like, because there was like no... Like, you know, I casually went over, I sat at the bar during the day, you know, the bar was empty. And I was like, hey, so um, what is it going to take to apply here? He's like, no, you can't work here. And I'm like, oh, wow. all right, cool. Why? Because <laughs> I'm always going to ask that. I want to know what it is. Maybe it's something I can work on. Right. And he's like, no, because you're going to come and work for me at my place. I'm oh, like, damn. All okay. right. Yeah. Sweet. This is before Amazing. he even like, saw you like bartend? Like, he, like, yeah. You were just a, a he, customer. I knew nothing about bartending. He was very well aware of that. And um, so I'm like, all right, cool, down. So he actually opened up a, a French-Italian restaurant not too far down south of Eglinton. And that's where I became a bar back, and, um, and that's where my career started, uh, bartending, basically. Um, I was there for the first two years, then I kind of quit. I uh, started at Pure later, 
Um, and then uh, you were bartending at Pure Later. No, no, I, I, I was a driver at Pure Later, <laughs> drinking and driving in the. Gym. But that was the thing. It's like I had to quit because you know late Thursday nights. Thursday nights were the hot spot there, and it's like couldn't I couldn't be it, going eh? to bed at three o'clock and and going to drive yeah. and do my job. Oh, so you had the Pure Later job, like yeah. So I was kind of doing both, and then that's when I said, you know, I, I got to quit. He was really disappointed, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before he even opened the letter, he's like, I'm not accepting that because he already knew what it was wow. uh, I was like but I have to yeah. <laughs> I'm like I can't do this so we came to an agreement that I was going to work Sundays uh, so I did a double header there on Sundays I did brunch and dinner which was great worked out for him worked out for me um, and then again I ended up uh, I ended up leaving I just it was it was really tough you know 14 16 hour days and then yeah. to start off my week at Pure Later was uh, was a little it was a little crazy, so he understood, and um, and I ended up leaving, and I took uh, I took about two and a half years off from bartending. Period. Wow. Um, and then he called me randomly, and he was like, "Hey, look, listen, um, I have a client who's doing a house party, and they're looking for a bartender. Would you be interested?" I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. It was Why like not? A private event. Yeah, I was right like, cool. And I still didn't know much. Like, I knew your basics. I knew some cocktails and stuff like that. But this was like. First time ever doing a private event um, on your own too. On right? my own, yeah. somebody's house. Luckily, the uh, the client was somebody that attended the restaurant, so I actually knew them already. So it made me oh, feel that's a little good, yeah. at ease, yeah. uh, which was really good. And then, uh, and then from there, I just kind of started thinking. I was like, well, what if I do this uh, on the side? And then I didn't really think much of it, and I did like one event every like three months. Mm. Um, I did again. I didn't promote or advertise. It was kind of like whatever. Yeah. And then uh, two years later, it just kind of like took off and just. And then was is that one brand tender? Um, no. Then I just actually focused just kind of on on the the bartending. Then I went to go work for Liberty Grand for a couple of years um, downtown, the Liberty Group. Um, and then I ended up leaving because Peter and Paul's had advertised that they were opening up their new place. And I'm like, perfect. It's 10 minutes away from home. Yep. Um, a great company like Peter and Paul's great reputation. They've been in the business for so many Network years. For yourself over there as well. Yeah. And, uh, and <clears throat> they were told, I was totally open with them too. And they didn't care if I handed out my own business cards to their clients. Like at the end of the day, there's so much work to go for for so many people that yeah, they're you're gonna, not I'm not right, stealing yeah. anybody. Yeah. So they, they knew that where it's like, if anybody needs a banquet hall, they're going to come here or another banquet hall. Exactly. Yeah. The parties that I was doing, I couldn't compete with them anyways. Yeah. So, so it was, it was really good. And their guests ended up seeing how I worked at their venue and then they would end up hiring me. Uh, but I did go through like a dry spell for like the first two years that I was giving out cards there didn't get any calls and people were asking me, Hey, do you have a, do you have a business card? Mm -hmm. Sorry, man, I forget you're over here. And they're like, do you have a business card? We do private events. And I'm like, all right, cool. Here you go. And uh, then at the end of the day, it's like, you know, I'm scratching my head a year later and it's just like, fuck, all these people are like talking about calling and nobody's calling me. And then surely, you know, <laughs> it, the third year comes around and it's just like, everybody's calling me. Hey, do you remember me? You did the wedding for my, my niece at uh, Universal and this and that, or you did my 60th, my grandfather's 60th birthday party. And I was like, oh fuck, everybody's starting to call in. Now. It was just and something that was just brewing. Eh? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, but that's the thing is like, I was just persistent. Like I, I just kept on doing what I loved and it didn't matter. Like, People, people are always going to talk, and you just got to keep doing what you want to do. Yeah. They're going to call you if they're going to call you. If they're not going to call you, they're not going to call you. But it never pushed me or, or what's the word I'm looking make, for? Make or break you. Discourage? Yeah, it didn't discourage me from doing what I wanted to do, and that was the private That's event. That's your typical success story, eh? Like you said, like first three years, not, you know, but you kept persistent, perssistent, persistent, and look where you are now. Look at you where know? I am now. Yeah. We know you feel doing podcasts with yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> realistically, that's kind of like our mission statement at Now or Never. That's the whole point we yeah. called it Now or Never Firm. It's just because now it's now or never. It's you know now what or I mean? Never. Yeah. So so either you take care of your business now, and and you have to have patience at the end of the day, right? Because being your own entrepreneur, like we deal with dry spell too, right? This is only our maybe our second year. For example, like in January, I was really busy. February, absolutely nothing. Yeah. Right. March slowly starting to creep up again. But you have to be ready for that that type of stuff. And and again, you you said you've been you were doing it for how long again? Like 
uh, going on 15 years. Okay. Total. Brand tender. Oh, brand tender. Yeah, it, just, uh, yeah. it just made five years, November 29th, 2021. When did brand tender okay. start? Like, when did you claim that name? And like, uh, you said five, five, five years, years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah years, November yeah. just made five years. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. I, I was actually doing a lot of like smaller little gigs for another a couple little um, staffing agencies. And uh, so I was a brand ambassador slash bartender. And then that's actually where the name came from. Brand tender, mm-hmm. bartender, brand ambassador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, I got my sister to thank for that, actually. She's my creator and designer for everything. She's the one who created my logo. She came up with it. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah, so... Shout outs to her, actually. Yeah. Shout out to Marky's sister. Right? <laughs> hey, watch how you say that. I said Marky's <laughs> sister. <laughs> oh my God, no, that's um, amazing. Okay, I have a sister, I know how it feels. Yeah. I have a sister too. Yeah, I have a sister too. We all have sisters. Yeah. So, so that's, how, uh, that's how Brand Tender uh, came to be, slowly yeah. but surely. Yeah, and uh, you know, much, much more to come from Brand Tender in the next couple of years. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're all over on social media, right? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Plug uh, yourself in. I Let mostly know. focus on Instagram, uh, so it's brand tender. Just change the A in brand to, to a, a V. v. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't sound right, doesn't look right, but I guarantee it's the right page <laughs> you're going to be looking at. Uh, so and uh, so it's B-R-V-N-D-T-E-N-D-E-R. Okay. Um, All over socials, Instagram. TikTok? Yeah, TikTok, TikTok uh, TikTok's same thing, I believe, or brand tender. With an A? Yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> it might be with an A. We'll, we'll follow up on that after. We'll get back to you on that. Uh, TikTok, honestly, I just use it so I can add music to my stories. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. That's true. I mean, I feel like something like you would blow up on TikTok. I was TikTok. about to say, I yeah, feel like you should really yeah, take advantage. Really you know what? TikTok. They're, TikToks are, uh, I'm still working on it. I, I need some uh, educational work on uh, how to work in, how to like actually yeah, connect. Yeah. Seriously, man, man, I yeah. think you can do really good on TikTok hey, with, your, with I, your content. Like, I have one video that I hit, I think like 1.7 million, million? views. You see? Wow. Yeah. Uh, that was For one real. video and honestly, like it was, it was just like, I Mine's blown. I'm just like, really? <laughs> that video? And it was and, probably and your the best w- one. The word, like the song was like terrible. I was, it was like one of my first TikTok videos and yeah. I was just kind of playing around with it and I just didn't know I can search music. So I just put whatever they recommended and it was just me blowing a bubble. Yeah. Cause uh, you, you have all like, you have, I have a lot of toys, yeah, a lot of fun th- gadgets that nice. entertain people at the bar. Um, and that was one of them. And that was like, slowly when it started getting introduced and you'd see it around yeah so i think people were just kind of like in shock and like wow i mean they saw you blowing a bubble that's pretty like intriguing yeah and that's (laughs) to be honest yeah and and it didn't come out of my mouth like i wasn't blowing the bubble it was out of a gun so (laughs) oh so then there you go people definitely wanted to stay yeah i see jaws dropping all the time when i'm at the bar and people like uh how'd you do that yeah i know that's amazing pick up your jaw first very entertaining (laughs) but yeah um Anything else? Uh, no, that's all that we've got uh, today. What do you guys want to wrap, it up, wrap it up on? I, I think we should we should get a picture of something. I think we should get everyone to send. So at the end of all of our podcasts, we tell our viewers to send us a, a picture of something to our, to our Instagram account. Oh, sweet. So I think we should, like, what? Get a picture of like, your, your favorite, favorite, favorite drink? Favorite drink. Yeah, or, either, or, hey, yeah your, I like your that. Your worst drunk your, picture of yourself. Yeah, the worst yeah. drunk picture of yourself. Get a picture yeah. on the next episode. I like that. Look, we don't judge, but if you want to <laughs> send us that picture of you <laughs> hugging yeah. the porcelain toilet, yeah. by all means, yeah. that, that might be a winner. That might be a winner. But yeah, no, so no nudes. Yeah, no nudes. Let's no, keep no it nudes. PG, you know. <laughs> Either your best drink that you've made at home or, or your drunkest picture. Your drunkest yeah. picture. I like that. Nice. And nice. don't forget to tag bartender, uh, yeah, brand tender, yeah. bartender. 100%. And then I need another <laughs> drink. Pl- plug in yourself one more time and then we'll call it a wrap. Uh, so at IG, it's a brand tender. Just change the A into to a v. v. So it's B R V N D T E N D E R. Nice. Mm, we'll put we'll put it on the well, yeah, 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 yeah. Marky, thank you Nick, very much. It's uh, been a pleasure, bro. Pleasure's Thanks, all mine. I wish awesome. you guys nothing but success in this. Same with you, I'm man. I'm glad to be one of the first on yeah, here. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Too. And yeah. I, I really hope you guys fucking call me back, man. Yeah, yeah we can. Yeah, we'll definitely do. We'll come here for drinks. I'm gonna come here for drinks. Just make sure you call me so I can come and join you for drinks. I don't want to be making them. No, no, I got you. No, no, trust me. It's more fun when I'm on the other side of the bar. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. We should. We should do something where we make the drinks for you instead. I, you know, now you're thinking. Now you're 
that's thinking. A, that's we'll do a vlog. That's a good we'll vlog. Do a vlog. No, we'll, we'll definitely do something again for sure. Because Sweet. like, yo, you, you're gonna like want content. This is what we, what we do. And maybe the next time it'll be like summertime. We'll do it on a patio. Yeah, yeah, we'd yeah. love to do or, that. Or you know, for maybe sure. a boat. Urgus has a great ass boat that we yeah. throw a party on every year in July. July boat party. <laughs> Let's go. So, uh, <laughs> so that'd be pretty dope. You know. You just got a beach, right? Yeah, now. I didn't yeah. just get a yeah, beach. Yeah, right? yeah. Right. We'll, we'll do a podcast and then we'll get shit faced on the boat. 100%. Awesome. We have our own parties. No, I hear you. They're pretty so left. Send us a pic of your worst drunk pick or your favorite drink, and we'll see you next week. All right, let's go. See you.